Dr. John Hewitt. It is great to be at Grace this morning. Thank you, thank you, thank you for inviting me to join in this celebration of three million dollars since 1974 to help end world hunger. Thank you, Grace. And it's great to be in the room with such great music. How many different genres of music can you bring into the room on a morning like this? We've got timpani, and we've got congo, and we've got brass, and we've got contemporary music, and we've got traditional hymns, and we've got children's choirs. We've got it all here at Grace. What a great day to be at Grace. Amen. And to be here also with the bishop. In Baltimore, there's a new Roman Catholic bishop, and he recently visited a uh, third grade class, and he asked the class, he said, well, do you know what bishops do? And uh, an eighth grader put up, uh, a third grader, eight years old, put up her hand and said, bishops move uh, diagonally and they protect the kingdom. <laughs> with a bishop who moves straight ahead. He's a straight shooter and he protects God's royal priesthood, God's holy nation, God's chosen people, not some king in some place, wherever that might be. It's good to be here in the room. It's good to be here with uh, this guy named Ed Marquardt. I told a joke last time I was here about him. Do you remember about the mule, the religious mule? And I didn't realize he was in the room and in the middle of the joke he stood up and said, I'm here, John. <laughs> I see you, I see you, I see you. Yeah, speaking of transportation, who here, raise your hands, want to find out who's in the room, who here has ever ridden a Harley Davidson? All right, now keep your hand up if you've ever been on a rowing team at Western Washington University. Okay, all right, any hands up? Okay, keep your hand up if you've ever driven a silver Corvette. Did you know that? You know, I used to drive a vet. I think your vet could beat mine, though. Mine was a Chevette. <laughs> Pastor, it's great to be with you. Where does this guy get the energy this guy has? He's what vitamin pills take when they get tired. That's so real. But it's great to be in the house this morning. And great to celebrate with you. And thank you so much for the honor and the blessing and the privilege. We're going to talk about this uh, story of the rich man and Lazarus. And I went on sermons from Seattle, but there was nothing there. No analysis there. <laughs> so I'm guessing there might be, you check and see if there's any analysis there tomorrow. <laughs> After I'm done with this today. Let's see if I can get into some character here. Because we've got a problem. We've got, a, we've got an issue. We've got a crisis. We've got uh, this man who ends up in a place, this wealthy man, this affluent man, man who ends up in a place where not even losing where relief can bring relief. <laughs> and there he is. And how did he get there? What, what's his problem? Is it, is, and I guess I could hijack this text and hold all of you ransom and simply say something like this. Well, his problem is his money. So if you give Lutheran World Relief your money to help the poor, then you won't end up where he ended up. Yeah. That could be a short version. That would work pretty good, wouldn't it? I could come in here and just hijack you and hold all of you ransom, but I don't think that's really what the text is all about. I don't think that's what's going on in our text today. I don't believe it's the money that's the problem. I think it's a lack of comprehension about what the source or who the source of the money is and what the purpose of the money is and who the neighbor is. So let's see, let's see, here he is, here, let's see if we can bring this up to date a little bit here, this rich man. Here we go, so here I am. I'm, I'm, well, I, feel so, I feel so wealthy. I'm here living in the Highlands, shoreline neighborhood. <laughs> you see, we have here, we have our own plumbing system, but we tr trust not the plumbing of those ordinary people. I have neighbors with names like Bowie. <laughs> 
I'm Nordstrom. <laughs> for my neighbors, and I and I drive in my Maybach when I'm not driving my Mercedes or my Lamborghini. <laughs> here I am, yes I am. I'm here, and and then I come around the corner, and I notice that there's this annoyance at the corner here at one North One Forty Fifth and Greenwood. Oh, yeah. Right here, as I'm turning into my gate, into my gate in community here at the foot of my gate. Who is this? What is this? I mean. I was just out shopping, and I come home. Well, I wasn't doing the shopping. I have shoppers. <laughs> at this point, they carry bags and they drive. I'm at the uh, Bellevue Collection. <laughs> Collection. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's too luxurious to be called a mall. <laughs> But it's not. A, it's a strip mall. <laughs> Outlet mall. This is a collection. And here I am arriving home, and there he is. This guy. This guy. I noticed that uh, when Luke tells my story, he doesn't give me a name. He just calls me the rich man. Hmm. Well, that's not so bad. The man. Just call me the man. <laughs> and then we have this last, this pathetic AIDS infected, infested. A nuisance, an annoyance, a menace to society. Lazarus. What does that name Lazarus mean? Let me just reach into my Armani suit, and, which it isn't, okay? <laughs> Take out my smartphone, my iPhone 5. I'm <laughs> seeing here Lazarus. Lazarus is, he means God is my helper. <laughs> God is your helper. Good God, man. God only helps those who help us. That's what the Bible says. Wait a second. It doesn't? Oh, yes, it does. Let me check my smartphone. It's right here in the book of Benjamin Franklin, right here. God helps those who help themselves. Man, you better get up and help yourself. You better pull yourself up by your bootstraps like I did. You see, I've worked so hard in my life. In fact, you heard about me in the first reading today. It said quite clearly there, my power and the might of my own hand have gotten me this well. Oh yes, I've worked hard, lived clean for the most part, done my bits, and God helps me. He doesn't help. Lazarus. So, some of us might be saying to ourselves, "Well, that's clearly not me. That snuck up, stuck up, persnickety, uppity person. That's not who I am. That's not the way I am." In your mind, don't do it out loud for other people to see. But just in your mind, raise your hand in your mind. If you are 49 years of age or older, don't do it for people to see, okay? Because we would never have guessed. I am, by the way, 49 years of age this year. I have a big 5-0 coming up in January. And if you and if I, all of us, with our hands up, all of us are dead in most of the places where Lutheran World Relief works, because poverty abbreviates life. Our lives in the United States of America are not normal. They are disproportionately privileged. We have more than any nation in the history of the planet has ever had at any time. Just in your mind, raise your hand. In your mind, don't do it for people to see, but just in your mind, raise your hand if you earn thirty-eight thousand dollars a year or more. <laughs> okay, I'm reading your minds. I'm reading your minds. The IRS is reading your. <laughs> Okay, and uh, I'm noticing that there's a great majority of hands that are up in this room. My hand is up, to be sure. My colleague Heather uh, McGinnis is here with us, and I know how much she makes. So I know her hand is up. We just approved another one, I think. Okay, so here she is. And uh, all of us with our hands up, all of us with our hands up, we earn more than 99% of the world's population. That's the threshold. That's all it takes. It's thirty-eight thousand dollars a year. Our lives are not normal, which is okay, as long as we know the source and the purpose. 
of this wealth that we have. And what I stand here before you today to celebrate and congratulate with you is that you get that here, that grace. You get the source. God as the giver of all good things, and you get the purpose so that we can give to our brother and our sister, and to Lazarus, and to those who have less than we do. I was just in Nicaragua with some of your colleagues, Bishop, three bishops. We traveled there, and we visited a water uh, production project, a well. And you know, you can't just plop a well in. Some of you have great experience. Connie McDonald here, your group has great experience with wells. You know, you can't just plop a well in. That can actually do more damage to a community than it can do good at times. After 10 years, 90% of wells, less than 10% of wells are actually operative or working anymore. So you got to teach the people how to take care of the well. you got to form a well committee or a water committee so the water thugs aren't the only ones who have sole access to the water. And so we form a water committee so that it's fairly and uh, equitably accessed because water is such a precious commodity. And then, you know, you, you got to have a democratic process. Was it Niebuhr who said that uh, because of the um, human potential for justice, democracy is possible. But then his second sentence is, because of the human inclination to injustice, democracy is necessary. And so you've got to have a committee so that it can be democratic. So you've got to design the committee first and get the technology right. And these bishops, and we were down there visiting with the committee, and we, we spoke to the committee members, and we asked them, we said, well, you know, who gets access to your water? Rich man, listen. Listen, rich man. Who gets access to your water, we asked them. And they said, anybody. And we said, even those who don't pay the water tax? They said, yes, anyone can have access to what we have. Because we know that it is God who gave us this water in the first place. It's not ours. It's not our own. And it is LWR through gifts from congregations like Grace. They didn't even say that part. But they said, it is LWR that helps us to access that water. And so we are in solidarity with all who are thirsty. Come, you who have no money, come and drink. Jesus said, if anyone is thirsty, come and drink. Oh, oh yes, they, they, they know the source, and they know the purpose of what it is that they have. And I celebrate with you that you know your purpose. And so I also celebrate with you that you guys know how to celebrate. <laughs> Thank you. I get to lots of Lutheran churches. And they can't all celebrate like they can here. Some of them, I think some of them have celebration constipation. <laughs> but you guys don't have that here. The joy of the Lord just abides in this place. And I praise God for that. I praise God for that. Because we all know that life is not always about celebration. So we, we need this to sustain us. In closing, I want to just share a story that has to do with um, your great effort here around malaria. But it doesn't begin there. It begins here in the United States. With my own family, uh, Monique and I are blessed with um, five children. Blessed with five children. Blessed with five children. Keep on saying it yourself after a while. Just five children. 80% of whom are female. Those are the girls. Four and five. Girls. And at one point we had four teenagers. I don't know why I'm coming down here. Excuse me. Let me go over here. <laughs> at one point we had four teenage girls in the house at the same time. <laughs> so, you know, losing her relief is easy. <laughs> Everything is my fault. We'll never do without drama. I learned hundreds and hundreds of times how imperfect I am. <laughs> and that's really okay. So, um, in all seriousness, our oldest daughter, since the last time I was here to visit you, at eight months pregnant, went into severe prenatal distress. And, and, then, um, and then she called one day, and there's something that, about a father who knows when he hears his girl say, Daddy, there's just a tone in the voice, Daddy. And I knew, when, by the way she said, Daddy, that she had lost the baby. She said, I, the baby died. She said, can we give the baby a name? 
And he said, of course, because every life is worthy of life. Every life, I believe, from conception to natural death has meaning, dignity, value, purpose. It's in God's plan. So we said, of course, and she called her child Malia. And she said, can we have a funeral for the baby? <clears throat> and he said, again, of course we can. And so I was there that day. I carried, I had the honor of carrying a pink miniature casket mm. to a hole in the ground where I placed, frankly, Malia's mangled remains in the dirt where she awaits, and this is our faith, this is our confidence, this is our hope, where she awaits the resurrection to eternal life and a glorified body because Christ is risen. Christ is risen. Christ is risen. Hallelujah. That's our hope. And that's my family's hope. And that's the hope that buoys us through this and carries us through this. And actually, we're doing fine in the midst of this. We will, we're getting through, we're going to get through. And I don't tell you this story to draw attention to me or to my family. But I watched what my daughter went through. It's one thing, I guess, to lose a child. It's another thing to watch your own child lose a child. That's just another level and layer and depth of intensity. And I watched, and I thought, we don't know what Cosmoly is death. We have no idea. But we do know what causes malaria deaths. People like Marty the Mosquito. <laughs> Anopheles mosquitoes, specifically. And we do know how to prevent them. And we do know how to stop them. And we do know how to stop mothers from standing at gravesides and saying goodbye to their children. Insecticide treated, which this one isn't. Insecticide treated, because your kids are underneath and I don't want any other insect. Insecticide treated malaria nets, which are safe, even the insecticides are safe. And so we've seen malaria rates reduced already from one death every 30 seconds four years ago to one death every 60 seconds now because of support from congregations for the ELCA Malaria Initiative, ELCA Malaria Campaign, or the Lutheran Malaria Initiative, or however it is that you choose to support. Like the bishop and I were talking, there's enough malaria to go around. <laughs> Just support $10 for a net lasting three years. Save the life of the least of these. The last on the lists of life, the last at the leprous among us, the littlest of these and the Lazarus in our midst. Amen. 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 Amen.